In this video, I'm going to be talking about the most important tool that I've used over most of my 15 years of injecting dermal fillers, and this tool is a cannula. And at the end of this video, hopefully you understand why I use cannulas and what is my favorite size cannula to use. So I first started using dermal fillers utilizing a needle. When you first start learning dermal fillers, you do what's the status quo. Everyone used needles then. There was no real other choice. They really imply that you should use needles by packing a needle within the uh, box of, of filler. So the needle they give you is this tiny, short little needle. It's In this case, it's a 27 gauge needle. And you're meant to inject the whole face with this tiny little needle. You can see it wouldn't go very far. I used to also be a trainer for one of the main filler companies. And I remember questioning why we had to use this tiny little needle. So I asked if I could use a longer needle. We can see that's significantly long. It's more than double the length of this needle. But they said no, because that you can't use anything that's not in the pack. You have to use uh, whatever needle is in the pack. And interestingly, they still provide the same needle they did over 15 years ago in the pack with the dermal fillers. So many years ago, I thought to myself, why don't we use a cannula? So a cannula, which is what I have here, has a rounded tip, so it's blunt, and that's got some huge advantages. Interestingly, fat transfer, which has been done for an even longer period than dermal fillers, has always really been done with cannulas, and that has always been the way that people have injected fat into the face. But for some reason, when fillers came out, they came out with needles and, and everyone was using needles. One of the main key advantages of a cannula over a needle is that it is blunt. So you, as you can see here, you cannot penetrate my skin with a cannula. Whereas uh, with a needle, you, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. And the same goes with, with blood vessels. So you cannot penetrate a, an artery or a vein very easily with a cannula. So if you inject into a vein, then the consequence of that is a bruise. Uh, it's, not, it's not great to, to cause bruising. That means there's more downtime for the patient. That's really one of the most uh, feared side effects of uh, dermal filler injections is getting a bruise, an embarrassing bruise for two weeks. But if you inject filler into an artery, that can have really serious consequences. One of the most serious complications of dermal fillers is when you inject a filler into an artery that feeds the retina or the back of the eye and you lose vision in one side. I'm not here to say that it's impossible to get into a blood vessel, vein or artery with a cannula, but because it's blunt, it's much less likely to penetrate into that vein or artery. That is the key advantage of using a cannula. The, the other advantages include the longer length. And now this is huge. I imagine if you have to fill various parts of the face with a very short needle, it's going to be multiple, multiple pricks. With the cannula, you can go in from one point and reach many points along the skin. This is particularly of importance when you do an area like the lips. If you use a very short needle, you're going to be pricking the skin multiple, multiple times. And of course, this causes more swelling. And one of the other key advantages of a cannula is that you can get a lot of feel. For example, I need to know what plane or what depth I'm in when I'm injecting in the face. So by using a cannula, I can actually feel which depth I'm at. And for example, like around the eye is a classic example. I know whether I'm in the lower eyelid if I pop through the orbital retaining ligament. So there's a ligament which sits like a hammock just under the eye. And that sort of differentiates the cheek from the lower eyelid. So if I want to inject into the lower eyelid, I know I need to pop through with a cannula. If I'm using a needle, I'll have no idea because you won't get that popping sensation. So there's a lot of feel that goes on with a cannula. Whereas a needle slices right through everything. You know, you could be going into the wrong plane, the wrong depth, but using a needle is significantly quicker because it's just, it, just, it just cuts through everything like a hot knife through butter. Whereas a cannula, you have to weave and find your way through the right path to get to your point where you want to inject. So 
So what factors are there when choosing a cannula? The first factor is the gauge. So that's the thickness or diameter of the cannula. The greater the gauge, the finer the needle cannula. I remember this filler came out many years ago, which was quite a thick volumizing filler. And they actually gave you an 18 gauge cannula, which is a very big cannula uh, to inject it with. And in order for us to use that cannula, we were uh, really needing to use a, a lot of local anesthetic in the face before inject using the cannula because it was so painful. I mean, imagine this thick cannula traversing through the tissues of the face. And not only that, the patients swelled. They swelled so much and it was, it, was, it, was, it was disastrous really. And later on we found out that we actually didn't need to use the uh, 18 gauge cannula that came in the pack of that filler. We could actually inject it through a 25 gauge cannula. I'm not sure why the filler companies have been so inaccurate with their provision of uh, needles or cannulas with their packs. Uh, over most of my years of injecting, I've been using a 25 gauge cannula. For, for many years, this was my favorite size um, until recently, but I'll, I'll tell you more in a minute. The gauge of a cannula, theoretically, also is said to determine its likeness to a needle. That is, if you have a very thick cannula, then it is less likely to behave like a needle. If you have a very, very fine cannula, then the theory is that it becomes more needle-like in its properties. So there is an argument that we should use bigger cannulas to help reduce the risk of injecting into an artery, especially in the light of the cases of blindness that have occurred with dermal fillers uh, in the past few years. The other property of larger and smaller cannulas is their flow characteristics. So a larger cannula will flow a lot quicker than a smaller cannula. So that is, you can inject a lot quicker through a bigger, fatter cannula than you can through a finer one. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> oh, geez. In my left hand, a 22 gauge cannula attached to five mils of water in a syringe. In my right hand, I have a 27 gauge cannula attached to five mils of water. They're both the same length. And if I, in, if I squirt as hard as I can, you can see that the that the uh, you can see that the 27 gauge cannula on my right hand is a lot slower oh i'm getting the camera wet than the 22 gauge so that's finished already that doesn't flow very much so these are not fillers obviously uh, i didn't want to waste too much filler like i did in my previous video but the principles are the same this is Porcell's law which basically states that given the same length flow will be inversely proportional to the radius to the power of four but so what you can surmise from this is that as an injector you will basically not be able to inject as quickly with a finer cannula than a thick one and of late that has changed my preference for my favorite cannula from a 25 gauge cannula to a 27 gauge cannula. And the reason for this is it's less traumatic, there's less swelling to the patient, less pain. And despite the fact that a 27 gauge cannula is more needle-like than a 25 gauge cannula, remember the flow of the cannula is determined a lot by not just how hard we press, but the gauge of the cannula. Now it's human nature if you can get something out quicker because there's no limitation. Uh, for example, with a large bore cannula, you're naturally going to inject a lot quicker. For example, if I were to use a 27 gauge cannula and I did accidentally perforate an artery, the rate of flow that I would inject would probably be not great enough to overcome the rate of flow of blood in the, in the artery. And that would reduce my likelihood of injecting into an artery and causing a complication such as blindness. If you had a larger cannula, although it's theoretically less likely that you'll perforate an artery, your flow rate is likely to be a lot, lot higher than if you'd used a very fine cannula. So that would actually overcome the arterial blood pressure. You would be able to inject into that artery and flow that filler right up to the circulation to occlude uh, a structure such as the eye. The additional fact that a, a very fine cannula is, is much less traumatic than a larger cannula and the fact that you can, you can cause a lot less pain and swelling 
and be much more gentle are the primary reasons why I use it. But because also it restricts my flow, I am able to control my injection of dermal filler better for better aesthetic results, as well as less risk of a significant injection of filler into an artery. I look forward to seeing you at our next video. I think you might need a bit of filler here. Really? Are you going to use a fine cannula? Um, oh, that was in your eye. <laughs>